Welcome to the Trauma Informed Lens Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Bennett. Each episode, we talk about the research and practical aspects of the trauma informed movement. This podcast is not designed to replace mental health services. If you feel uncomfortable or triggered by our discussion, please consider seeking your own trauma treatment. In no way is seeking treatment an admission of weakness, it is a chance to build resiliency and experience post traumatic. You can find show notes, resources, and more at Trauma Informed Lens. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Trauma Informed Lens Podcast. Uh, I'm Matt Bennett. Uh, just a quick solo introduction here today. I'm excited uh, to announce, you may have heard this in a previous podcast, that I published my most recent book, Heart Rate Variability. I got a copy right here, so you're always good to hold your book in your hands. Um, subtitle is Using Biometrics to Improve Outcomes in Trauma-Informed Organizations. And uh, if you're a long-time listener, you know we did a series uh, back about two years ago um, where I really got introduced uh, to HRV. And uh, since then, I've developed an app, started Optimal HRV, uh, which uh, is rolling out in several organizations, which I'm excited about. Um, started a company with uh, a great uh, partner, Jeff Summers, and uh, wrote a book on the topic. So a- as part of trying to get uh, HRV up and how it might really impact uh, the quality of services, our own self-care, uh, organizational wellness, and trauma-informed organizations, uh, Jeff and I have also started uh, the Heart Rate Variability podcast, uh, which you can find at heartratevariability.com. We uh, are publishing our first episode uh, today, and so officially, I guess, it's, it's sort of out there in the world, but it hasn't been announced. So I just want to include this in uh, the Trauma-Informed Lens stream. Um, so you get a, a picture of what we're doing. The, the first episode is kind of an overview. So, uh, and see if you're interested in joining me for that podcast as well. So uh, here is episode one of the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. I hope you enjoy, and I would love, as always, to get your feedback. Again, you can visit us at optimalhrv.com or uh, heartratevariabilitypodcast.com. Also, if you go there, you get a free can download a free ebook uh, version of uh, my Heart Rate Variability book. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, here is episode one of the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. Welcome to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss the exciting science behind HRV, and how you can apply it to your own health and the work that you do. Just a note, this podcast does not replace medical advice, and if you're gonna apply this to your own life or others, please consult with a medical provider. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of our heart rate variability podcast where we analyze all things heart rate variability. My name is Jeff Summers. I uh, am a tech industry veteran, somebody that's known uh, my my co-host Matt Bennett for a very long time. He has recently introduced me to heart rate variability in the last uh, 12 months or so and it's something I've become very passionate as he's taken me along the journey that he's been on for a, a bit longer. Matt, you wanna give a quick intro before we get started? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. I'm excited to uh, be recording our first episode here. So uh, I'm Matt Bennett. Uh, some of you might know me from the Trauma Informed Lens podcast, uh, which I've been doing for, it seems like a decade and a half now, but I think I just recorded and published uh, episode 112 or something on that. So. Uh, Jeff, it's fun to be uh, at number one with you, my friend. So uh, Jeff and I have known each other, you know, for almost 20 years right now. And uh, yeah, my my background, if you're not familiar, I've uh, got a background in mental health therapy. I have a master's in counseling psychology, but I've really spent the last 17 years of my life and career really researching, writing about, podcasting about, blogging about, and doing a lot of training on uh, the trauma-informed care movement. So how do we help people under intense stress or trauma uh, heal and uh, live, live lives without that pain and suffering? So uh, I'm excited to bring uh, hopefully my energy and passion for that, combine it with Jeff's knowledge and what he brings and uh, hopefully have a really great podcast series with you all. 
Yeah, looking forward to it. And, and because it's the first episode, I think it's important for people to sort of understand what the focus is going to be for us moving forward. Obviously, heart rate variability is going to be the common thing, common theme amongst all of our episodes, um, you know, and really educating people and helping people understand the power behind what understanding what heart rate variability is and understanding the power behind capturing it as a, a day-to-day measure um, for personal benefit, for wellness, for organizational benefit, um, for healing, for all kinds of things. And so uh, I think for our listeners, it's important they know each, each episode is going to be a little bit different in terms of how we, we tie it all together, but heart rate variability is going to be the constant as we, as we move forward. So with that, Matt, I think the most important thing we can do is probably define HRV, heart rate variability, for the, the folks like me who a year ago didn't have any clue what HRV was. Great question. So heart rate variability, and, and I, I'm afraid that Jeff might be getting better at this definition than I am, but uh, <laughs> hey, hey I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it the old shot. Uh, we've been joking about the elevator speech of, hey, if you got 30 seconds to describe this, how would you do it? So I want to go from two perspectives. One is kind of the basic, uh, you know, I'd say overarching perspective is heart rate variability really measures our body's ability to effectively handle or recover from stress. Um, So that, if you think about that, if you're not into all the biology and nerd out like I do about stuff, it's really a biometric that measures how our body is handling from or recovering from stress. Now, Okay, so so what is heart rate variability? That doesn't tell me why it's called heart rate variability or HRV. So heart rate variability is the variation between heartbeats. So you, most people are familiar with heart rate, which is beats per minute. Uh, right. Heart rate variability, and we've known this for hundreds of years, that there's a variability between those heartbeats. So our heart doesn't beat like a metrodome that keeps beat for a pianist um, at a steady pace. Instead, there's variations between the beats. And you might kind of inherently think, well, the more variations, probably not good because we live in a time of computers and machines where consistency is really important. But actually, that that variation really describes our mental, biological, emotional, cognitive flexibility. Um, And and we'll we'll dive into more sympathetic, parasympathetic, dorsal branch of the vagus nerve. We'll get to some (laughs) of that nerdy stuff um, in future episodes. But very simply, every time we inhale, we activate our sympathetic or or sort of our energetic part of our autonomic nervous system. And it speeds our heart rate up. Every time we exhale, this is called sinus arrhythmia for your other nerds like me out there it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and slows the heart rate down. So this interaction between the sympathetic and parasympathetic, the better it is. In other words, the the more mentally healthy, physically healthy, socially cognitive healthy, that it really, the variations between heartbeat really shows I have the flexibility to take on challenges, uh, to confront the stress or recover from uh, the stress that, that is facing me in, in my life. Um, so, so Jeff, I'm pretty impressed because that, that was only a few minutes. But, I uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> since, since you've been on this year-long journey plus with me, I wonder is, you know, from, from somebody who doesn't come from the mental health, you know, and you know I'm a huge brain nerd uh, with that, I wonder if there's anything you, you'd kind of add with what you've learned over the last year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and my background, I didn't get into much during the intro section, but my background has really been um, in the, the technology world, helping small startups grow and, and building and leading sales and marketing teams and, and you know, coming from my world to having no background in biology like you and, and not understanding the brain and not having all the background on trauma. It, it took you all of about five minutes to get me really interested in this. And you know, I'll have you talk a little bit about the applications of HRV right now and sort of where people are focused because it's actually a really popular trend in the fitness community right now. Yeah. Um, but, but what really got captured my interest in this was the, 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 the way that you can kind of correlate this to everyday people's health and wellness and, and understanding their bodies and, and being able to really put a, a plan together in terms of how we can use one measure to capture how am I doing? And there's really nothing else out there that does that. And so when you describe how this works, 
um, it just, it just, you know, became really exciting. And when you, you know, you said your ability to react to and recover from stress, I think that's a really interesting component because people don't think about their body's reaction to it. They say, how much stress am I under? How do I alleviate it? All of that kind of stuff. But what people aren't often talking about is how do I handle it? How am I physically able to biologically able to handle the everyday stress that I go through? Especially in times like this. Obviously, when we got into this, Matt, I had no idea what was coming. <laughs> the world was going to be under a pandemic and people were going to be staying at home and you know, all the things that have happened over the last four months. Um, but, but having a one metric scientific measure that can help people understand that and then very directly correlate their actions, their behaviors, their habits, uh, be it eating, drinking, socializing, all those things back to this one metric, I thought was very, very cool and saw a lot of technical applications that you could apply to make it very interesting for people to consume as well. Great. I don't know. Is, I don't Absolutely. Know, I, don't I, I was very asking, impressed but... as, as the non-sales guy that uh, I was able to communicate in a way to get you interested on, on that first lunch that we had a year ago. So That's absolutely <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you know, good ideas are good ideas. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, so I think it's important too to talk about the history of HRV personally, because you know as we look at this, it, it is becoming something that people have heard about. And as you're, especially if you're high, hardcore into fitness, you probably heard about it for the last couple of years. Why is that? Why is it so new? Why are people still wondering what HRV is, considering it's been around for so long, and it, it is such a you know, compelling. Um, at least kind of groundbreaking at best metric that people just aren't aware of. Absolutely. Great question. So, you, you know, we again, I mentioned we've known about this for, for hundreds of years, but it was really in about the 1960s that we started to create algorithms to really measure heart rate variabilities. And, and there's, there's dozens at this point of different algorithms and, depending on the scientific validity of the certain algorithm, they, they measure slightly different things. And, and that's a rabbit hole that's uh, pretty interesting for a nerd like me, would put 99.9% .9 of the population asleep in a heartbeat, uh, so to speak, ha ha. Um, <laughs> and, and so around 1960, the, the peer review journal articles started coming out as again, this measure of how our body and mind are handling or recovering from stress. And it gave us this way to really measure a whole bunch of things. So how's test taking impact stress? How does a workout, a hard physical workout impact our, our body's ability? Because a workout is stress. So, you know, from the 60s, there's been this gradual increase of, again, peer reviewed uh, articles in journals coming out. Now, the, your question is a good one because, okay, we've, we've known this for hundreds of years. We have really started, there's been a gradual growth and I'd say right now in the research, almost an explosion of research around this as what I love about HRV is Google HRV and anything. Um, I, I Googled uh, because I, I got a comment on Facebook of uh, MS uh, and HRV. And again, several articles came up, really good articles done in peer reviewed journals. So, but to answer your question, Jeff, why haven't, why, why were we able to get in here 2020, the podcast title of Heart Rate Variability Podcast, um, why haven't more people heard of this? And that's a technology answer, um, is before a few years ago, you had to go in, get hooked up to an EKG machine, and then have a computer attached to that machine to interpret your results. Um, because normal EKGs, you know, most of them don't give you heart rate variability. Um, in recent years, the great thing is very affordable heart rate variability Bluetooth readers have come out. There's not a ton of them yet, but, but they're, they're hitting the market. And iPhones got, you know, you can ask different people, think about how good the reading is, but iPhones are carrying this Garmin. Um, Garmin, the chest straps were some of the initial readers you could have obviously not comfortable for, for a lot of people. And so why this is starting to really take off is now we have cheap uh, but valid uh, measuring devices, most, mostly Bluetooth with the phone, 
and fairly affordable apps on our phone to interpret those results for us. So all of a sudden, something that took a researcher needed a grant of a few thousand dollars at least to, to run this data. Now we can take readings every day for pennies uh, a day. So, so all of a sudden, the price of this and the practicality of it uh, dropped magnitudes and now heart rate variability is available to the masses, which is, uh, I think, a really, uh, I know it's going to be a really exciting thing. And I think the world's just kind of figuring out, okay, how, how can we use this uh, outside the elite athlete arena, which has integrated this, I believe, better than anybody else. That's cool. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, technology has changed the world in so many different ways, right? But, it, yeah. you know, it's nice to know that there, there's just so much data that, that confirms what, how important HRV is for, you know, everybody. And, yeah. and you know, continually getting more and more access to that is really exciting. Well, well, and it's, it's that challenge of Google HRV and anything. And you'll probably, mm -hmm. I, 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 will, I will lose this challenge. And please email <laughs> me because, I, I, you know, it's fun. Like I was telling I was like, for, for the, you know, the book that I just published, I, wanted, I wonder if there's anything out there on like the growth mindset. Uh, and Google HRV, the growth mindset, and boom, there's the article. So, so you know, there, there's this, what, what we're so fortunate is, is there's this great decades of research out there that it was just hard for me to access because I couldn't get my own HRV reading. So it <laughs> helped to inform the research, but it wasn't practical for, for the, the end user like you or me. And, and now we're so fortunate that it's, it's there for us to use again, uh, pennies a day, which is really exciting. Absolutely. Okay, so you know we understand what it is. We know it's been around a long time. It's really well studied. It's scientifically proven. There's no question on, on the validity. So why should people care? <laughs> why you know why why is this something that that you and I both think that everyone should be adopting this in their daily routine? Yeah, great question. So so a few a few answers to that. Um, one is, do you have stress in your life? You know, that, that to me is, is the number one question. If you have no stress in your life, you know, then, then maybe you don't need HRV. But, you know, a lot of my work, Jeff, as you know, are, are with some of the most burned out professions out there. When yeah. you look at healthcare workers, when you look at teachers, when you look at police officers, social workers, I mean, we're, we're dominating uh, the, the categories, you know, and then working with trauma, which is the most in, intense stress, uh, that you can experience. So, so when I look at whether it's from a self-care perspective or working with people who are under stress in a clinical, medical, educational setting, all of a sudden it's like, man, these are folks who are struggling more than most people, uh, whether it's someone experiencing homelessness, whether it's somebody struggling with an addiction, or whether it's the professionals working with these folks, um, and we haven't had a good way to quantify our wellness. We haven't been able to quantify our self-care strategies to know whether they're working or not. We haven't been able to really quantify whether a therapeutic intervention is improving the health of my nervous system. And, you know, as, as we like to say, really, you can look at all the science around HRV, and yes, it measures our ability to handle or recover from stress, but on the other side, it's really a measure of mental, med medical, cognitive, and social health. And so if any of those mental, medical, social, cognitive health matter to you, the work you do or the people that you're trying to help, whether that's a, a workforce, um, it, you know, in, no matter what they're doing, we know stress and burnout impact performance, uh, retention, uh, absenteeism. So all of a sudden you've got all this organizational research you can put on top of this. You've got all the, the trauma research you can put on top of this. Um, families, for example, the stress on family systems we know impact healthy attachments between caregiver and children. So if, if, if stress comes into your thinking, um, uh, HRV is the best way out there to, to measure it. And so that's where like, when I was talking to you, it's like, I can't think about people, I can't identify anybody that doesn't need this. Um, you know, right. and you know my dream, get on 
you know, in the foster care system, get it into the child welfare system, get in the, the addiction, homelessness, um, because those are the populations I work with and are, those populations are under traumatic stress a, a lot, if not all the time. But man, it's like just the, the new mom, the new, the new dad, yeah, the, absolutely. The, the, your organizational wellness. Sure. So that's, that's been the exciting thing of this is, you know, you start to look at like where this could go and, and you, you don't really see much of a stopping point if, if there's a human being involved. <laughs> yeah, because what human doesn't have stress? So one of the <laughs> things that uh, I would like to, the, the next one I meet will be the first one I meet, right? Um, yeah, exactly. So, so one of the other things that, that really captured my imagination on this from our first conversation and, and obviously through the last year we've been working on this together is the predictive nature of it. And whether it's in a, you know, someone struggling with addiction or whether it's somebody in a corporate environment or whether it's you know, just in a family setting, uh, you know, continued drops in your HRV score can really predict certain types of behavior or you know certain things and I, I think that that is really interesting and really unique because not only can it help you understand the the overall wellness but if you start comparing current readings to baseline readings over time all of a sudden you can start to see trends in hopefully positive mm -hmm. but maybe more importantly negative ways that can predict um you know behaviors that uh, can, can really impact people's lives in a negative way so when you, you apply that, you know, not only to some of the organizations or, or helping organizations that you talked about, but just individuals in general, you know, when are you most likely to get into a fight with your significant other? When are you most likely to be short with your children? Um, when you don't want to be, you know, when are you most likely to get in car accidents because you're distracted or, you know, those kinds of things, plus predictive health. Um, you know, you always talk about how nine out of the 10 top leading causes of death can be predicted by drop in HRV over a relatively short period of time. So, I mean, this is something that can tell us earlier than a doctor when we might have cancer or have health problems that will clearly negatively impact our, our quality of life, you know, and then apply that to the addiction world and, and, and treatments. And, you know, it's just a, a really, you know, compelling thing that people need to pay more attention to. Yeah, and that's, I, I think, you know, that, that life-saving component, that there were a few things yeah, that to put it. made me, because, you know, I, if you know me, you know I have a passion for this stuff, uh, you know, but, but if you <laughs> also you know me. it comes through through the Zoom right now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but if you also know me, you know, if you said, do you think Matt's going to start a tech company anytime soon? Probably your answer would be, yeah, I, I know, you know, who knows what this crazy guy's going to do, but I wouldn't see that necessarily being one, one of the steps in his career, but it's like, you, you're right, it's that sort of predictive factor was one of those things. Um, studies on relapse and suicide, uh, you know, uh, for, for uh, relationships or homes that might have violence, whether that's intimate partner violence, seeing those spikes in stress we know can predict harmful behaviors. And in, in the, the helping world, what, what, what we can do is that hey, we may not be seeing this person for another week, but if they're sharing their HRV scores with us on a daily basis, we can see this drop in HRV and we can reach out proactively. And, you know, when when's that save the first life, right? Because, hey, I intervene, this, this person's isolating, but they're, they're thinking of relapsing, they're, they're too ashamed to reach out to anybody, but, but I call them up proactively and reach out. Um, you know, as, as we live in a time of COVID, and if you're listening to this in like uh, 2025, that's a good thing because it means we survived 2020. But <laughs> the, we, we are recording this as our country is just getting worse and worse into this epidemic, you know, is a, a few days drop won't tell you you have COVID-19, but it is, is kind of that warning sign that something's going on. So, so go get tested. Uh, a few weeks drop means you might want to go just do a checkup with your doctor because maybe it's an indication. If you have any pre-existing conditions, you know, you want to really pay attention to that. So, you, you know, there, there is a, I think there's easily to say, and, and somebody being on HR, HRV monitors now for a couple of years, it's kind of changed how I looked at myself, changed my life in certain ways and how I act. Um, but it's also can be potentially life saving as well. And that's, that, that's, that's just a huge piece of my passion is 
you know, I, to, to reach out, to be proactive, uh, to get this, uh, I think it just can be, uh, like I said, life saving um, if it's Im implemented in the way we envision it to be. That's it. Yeah. So you're so passionate. You wrote a book. <laughs> and for the first day, I'm holding it in my hand. It's, uh, it's got the uh, not for retail strip on, on this one. Uh, uh, but yeah, so, you, you know, got the app, uh, uh, heart rate variability, all my in-person trainings pretty much postponed. So um, yeah, I decided to write a book. Uh, and, and Jeff is a kind enough uh, business partner to support me and, and actually write the foreword for the book as well. So uh, yeah, you know, I wrote Healing with Heart Rate Variability, uh, more specifically for helping organizations, though I, I think you can pick it up and get a lot no matter what situation that you're in from it. And the good thing is if you want to pick it up, uh, at least at the time we're recording this, uh, we're giving it away for free at OptimalHRV.com. So, uh, and, and we're going to use that to kind of structure these initial uh, podcasts that we do. So uh, if you're interested in this and listening to us, please go pick up a copy, even if you're just kind of hitting the chapters you think might apply to you. But one of the things with this being kind of isolated into that laboratory research setting is that there weren't very many practical books out there. Um, I read most of the books on HRV out there, but a lot of them are like, you know, here's time domains versus frequency domains versus, you know, it really dives into the algorithms. And as a nerd, I can only stand so much of that myself. Like, I, I find it fascinating, but, you, you know, you can only do about 50 pages of algorithms before even I kind of lose interest. So, you know, what, what I wanted to do was give a really a practical, not, not worry about all the algorithms. There's plenty of that research out there. Um, but, but really look at how do we implement this to improve the health of our workforce um, uh, and to improve the health of the outcomes, again, whether we're medical, whether there were mental health, social work, uh, public health, education, you know, how, how do we use this to, to really get better results for those we're helping or get better organizational outcomes because we have a healthy uh, workforce? And that's different, right? I mean, there, there, there's really uh, people listening to this who are well familiar with HRV probably understand this, but for those who don't, HRV has really been adopted significantly in the fitness and athletic world. Uh, but very few people are looking this as a, at this as a way to apply to an organizational setting outside of working out. Yeah. And why do you think that is? Why, why do you think it's really been one specific community that's embraced HRV and, and most everyone else remains, you know, kind of in the dark to its, its power, so to speak? Great question. So one is that that's where the technology's gone. So, so you have things like Elite HRV, um, who, who I think has, has a really good app out there. Uh, Whoop, uh, the, or I always say that, Aura Ring, I think I'm saying that correctly. But nope. there, there's been that athlete-based focus. Now, let, so let's talk about this why from a, from a uh, athletic perspective. And I know, I know, Jeff, you and I have both been athletes back in our path. And now, now we're <laughs> kind, kind of the kind of believe. athletes who work out and need a day <laughs> off because we're so sore the next day. Um, you, maybe me more so than you. Be uh, it happened fast, didn't it? No, <laughs> no, no, no. But, but so you think about a workout or a game is a type of stress. It's a physical type of stress. So what athletes have been using this for, and I, I use this more from a productivity standpoint in my work, very similar way to look at it is, hey, you know, as athletes, especially I played basketball through college, no coach would ever say, hey, today needs to be a recovery day for you. Like, yeah, take the, the it expectation easy. Don't, is, don't work out hard today. The, yeah, the person that gets up and busts their butt the hardest is going to get on the field, is going to get on the court, is going to, that was what you did every day. Don't care how tired you are, you get up and busted your butt. Well, what HRV is telling us is that if our body is worn down from the previous day's workout, if I go ahead and push myself to my limit again, I actually highly increase my likelihood for injury or illness to, to take hold. 
my body's not capable of that. So folks like LeBron James is on this. I think about every PGA golfer is on some sort. The NBA is doing this in their uh, bubble right now is that, that they're really looking at this to say, okay, how, how, what kind of workout can I take on today? And as they measure HRV over time, it's to say, okay, I want to peak at this game. So what do I do the days leading up to the game to make sure that I go in with the highest HRV possible? So, so it's, it's been in that arena. And I, I give in and I pick on these folks a little bit, but I love them too. It, the, the CrossFit mentality, right, is, you know, the CrossFit people, at least the ones that I know, just that's all they talk about is CrossFit. And, and this helps them uh, maximize their training. And anything they do with that, they're going to pay – you know, substantial money to get that sort of level of feedback. So, so it's been just this, this high level of adaptation, especially in the college and professional ranks uh, to, to get feedback. And teams are now structuring themselves around this as well. Um, again, it's, it's kind of was a shock to me when, because I didn't set out, even though I'm so glad we did this because it's been so much fun to go on this journey with you, my friend. I, I did set out to create kind of the mental health equivalent of that. Um, in fact, as you know, I spent months trying to integrate existing technology out there, which is why I spent way too much money on heart rate variability monitors to, to see if, okay, the organizations I train, I can bring this technology into it. But it, it just wasn't there because, you know, if you're a basketball team, you don't have to worry about HIPAA. Uh, you don't have to worry about confidentiality. You don't, you don't have to worry about some of that stuff. So just the nature of these apps, a lot of them I'm a huge fan of, just weren't really adaptive to the environments we wanted to bring this into. So, so really with optimal HRV and what we're trying to create is really the, yeah, the NBA players get it when they're in their bubbles and obviously they can afford a lot of money uh, to do that. But, but hey, I want the person experiencing homelessness. I, I want the, the nurse to, to check her own health. Um, I want the foster family to be able to, to manage that and so we can give them better, better support. I want people recovering from addiction to get this same level of insight so they know, may know that they're at risk on a given day as well. So, you know, what, what I'm excited uh, to bring this and, and to podcast about it now, to write books about, to work with you on it is, you know, I think this is a game changer for, you know, helping organizations, but really anybody that's under high stress situations and, you know, to bring a, a solution into that environment. Um, like I said, I, I know it'll be life changing because of what I've experienced in my own life, but, you know, I, I, there's evidence that this could be life saving as, as well. All right, which is huge. It's kind of interesting because you think of stress and that, that's sort of the foundation of HRV. And, yeah. and when I think of stress in life, I don't think of my workout typically, yeah. you know? And so it's, it's very interesting that that's sort of the community that's embraced HRV first. And while it's very valid and it's been hugely helpful for them in, in designing very explicit training regimens for everyone. Yeah. When you think of stress, it's typically everything else in your life, be it work, relationships, whatever it might be. So it makes sense. Let's apply this stress metric, stress-related metric to your daily life because that's where probably 90% of your stress is coming from. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where, again, all the science is there. That, that's the great thing about, you know, we've talked to people and it's like, well, we could set up a, a research study to show that this is a valid measure. It's like, no, 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 no. Just Google it. You know, there's, it's a <laughs> valid measure. That. Like, like right. it's, you know, we, we don't have to prove HRV, which is, you know, a nice thing. We can get to the, the solutions based uh, point of it, but there's at least as much, if not more research out there about, again, the, the mental cognitive social health as there is about athletic performance. And, you know, yeah, I mean, it just it was, it was something that didn't exist out there. And, and the fact that our app, what I'm really excited about is, even though, you know, it kind of initially was designed to kind of follow, you know, our, our shared passion now for, for helping individuals who are struggling in life, you know, you, you can take it into a business environment. And, you know, if, if the leadership is bought in to say, hey, if our staff are burned out, they're not going to be able to perform cognitively, socially, emotionally in the way that's going to drive good outcomes for our business. You, you know, it, it works for, for that as well. So it's kind of exciting to be, 
you know, what, what we're not necessarily trailblazers on the research front uh, to, to really bring this in a practical way to these new environments is, you know, a really exciting place to be. Yeah, right. And the application of it and the, the ability to, to kind of compare the, or, or, you know, it's basically the same thing to say productivity is, is to the, the corporate workplace is what performance is to the athletic workplace. Absolutely. So the, this has direct correlation to both, which I think is very interesting and very cool. Yep. Well, let me, let me ask you a question here is, you know, you've been on an HRV app now for, for maybe close to a year. Well, yeah, what has been some of, some of your insight uh, into what, what has it told you? Uh, you know, and, and share a little bit about your life situation right now. <laughs> maybe some, maybe some things, uh, maybe some things I didn't want to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, married with two young kids at home, we've got a three-year-old and a 10 month old. Um, so I started this right around the time our youngest was born and, uh, it definitely helps you understand the impact that your habits, um, your, your personal habits, everyday habits, whether eating, sleeping, alcohol consumption, all of those things have on your nervous system and your ability to cope with your day to day. And, and obviously having a newborn in the house, sleep has been a premium um, to say the least. And you notice some serious swings in your HRV scores based on, was it a good night or a bad night sleeping? Right. Um, you know, alcohol consumption. You know, I'm, I'm somebody that enjoys drinking a beer too. I'm a tequila guy. Um, and it's seeing sad, it? how it's... quickly your HRV deteriorates when you have just you know one or two cocktails or, or beers or whatever it might be, um, you, you don't have any way to equate those those behaviors to your health in a very short term view like you do with HRV. I mean, to, you know, if you do too much of it over a period of time, it's going to come back to haunt you, and you're going to gain weight, and you know, do all the things that are unhealthy for your body, and, and we all logically know that. But having the feedback, and this is what biofeedback is, right? It's biometric, giving you feedback on how you're doing at a particular point in time based on all the things you've put in your body, done with your body, experienced in the last X number of hours between your last reading. And that has been invaluable. And, you know, my wife is, is a con converted HRV fan and takes her reading every morning to, to just better understand what she should expect from herself that day. And ultimately, you know, I think that's a really good way to put it. It was, what can you expect from yourself? I mean, you've got this biological state at that moment in time. So you may expect to be your best person you can possibly be. Or you might say, look, today's, my body's just not ready to be the best I can possibly be. So I need to understand that, forgive myself for that, and figure out how to deal with that and, and what I need to do to make it better tomorrow. And so all those things have been really interesting, eye-opening for me. I can't wait to, to see how some of the organizations that we're working with with Optimal HRV are going to be able to use it with their clients and, and their employees. And, you know, as, as more and more people start to see the value, it's going to be really exciting to, to see the impact it, it can make on, on all, of, all of the people that are kind of going through the same process we are right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jeff, this has been a great first episode. So yeah, this has I'm been, looking forward this has to been some more. fun. So uh, absolutely. You, you know, if anybody's interested, like I said, the, the free book is out. Um, and just go to our website, optimohrv.com. Uh, um, we'll, we're working on the podcast page as well. So that's where show notes and uh, everything else will live too. So uh, Jeff, uh, enjoyed the show. Always enjoy talking to you, my friend. And uh, always, thanks yeah, we'll, we'll everybody for uh, out for listening. Soon. Absolutely, thanks everybody. Appreciate All it. Right, thanks, take Matt. Take care. All right, take care. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you're interested in more information about HRV, please visit us at optimalhrv.com. Also, if you visit optimalhrv.com, you'll be able to sign up for our email list and download our free ebook healing with HRV. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next episode.